In a previous video, I shared an intermediate module I had created and went through my module planning process and using the module planning sheet. In this particular video, I'm going to walk you through how to add the content into the module. So as a quick refresher, my students clicked Islet to access the module and it took them to the very first page in the module. They could access the module by clicking modules in the course navigation and then clicking on the very first page. Here's my done module, but you can see above I have the same module shell and they have twos behind it because I've recreated the same module and this is the module I will be adding the content in. So I'm going to duplicate this tab, right click duplicate, and in the first tab I'm going to have the done module visual and then in this second tab I will have the incomplete module. So I'm going to first start by clicking edit and then I'm going to drag this down so my rich content editor is larger. So let's go back to that first page. Here's the title of my page. I have an image text and I've included these emojis. Okay, so here's the title of my page. To access your emoji keyboard, you're going to click command control spacebar and select the emoji that you like. In this particular page, I have that image. So I'm going to simply Google learning targets. Okay, right click, save image as. And now it's saved to my desktop. So now when I'm in my rich content editor, click upload image, click inside the box, and then I'm able to click on the image I just saved. Then hit submit. And you're going to see it appear in the rich content editor. It might not be the size you want, so you have two options. You can click onto the image and drag it the size you want or by clicking onto the image, this image option box appears, and then you have the ability to customize it on the side. I think I'm okay with that size. So I will press return to get my cursor down below the image. For time's sake, I'm not going to type out my learning targets, but I'll replicate those three lines. Okay, so imagine these are my learning targets. I want them a little bit larger, but I'm first going to add in my emojis. So again, that command Control spacebar will bring up your keyboard. And I typically like to put a spacebar behind or a space be behind them. So I'm going to go through that process. If I just wanted to copy them, the shortcut on your keyboard is Command C to copy and put your cursor where you want to paste it and Command V. Okay, so now I want to make the text a little bit larger. I'm going to highlight. I typically like to select it as 14. I think the default is 12. And I have the ability to bold, underline, center, etc. Okay, so now I'll scroll down and I'll click save. And let's compare. This was my previous one. This was the one we just did together, pretty similar. Again, we added an image, our text, and emojis. We worked in the rich content editor, which is the same thing that's available in pages, assignments, discussions, etc. So once you learn it once, you can replicate these same type of skills for other things as well. Okay, let's move on. So in my next part of the module, I have a discussion. I'll click back to my done module and see what all we have there. So again, this is in the rich content editor. You see a ton of text, you see more emojis, and I also included an image to show where they need to click in the discussion. So let's replicate that on this tab. So I'll click next, enlarge my rich content editor, and I've gone ahead and copied my text. And now let's click back to see we have a ton of emojis. I've bolded some words. So I'll show you that process. Double click or highlight the word, bold. When I want them to think about certain things as they read, 
I use the thought bubble. So on your keyboard, it's command control space. There's my thought bubble. Put a space behind it. My task, I had it bold and underlined. Take a picture, command control space, camera, explain. They're going to be writing. So I use the pencil and give feedback. I use the thumbs up. Once you establish your emojis, I would keep them consistent. So every time they're going to be taking a picture, I include the camera. When I'm asking them to give feedback, I include the thumbs up sign just so it's consistent visuals for them. Okay, now if I click back to the done module, you can see I have a picture that I simply took of reply down here. As my students are becoming more comfortable and familiar with Canvas, I may not need to include all of these visuals, but to start out with, I think it's really helpful. So I will walk you through that process. I'm going to go click Save so I can see the reply button. And on my keyboard, I'm going to select Command Shift 4. This allows me to take a screenshot and not of my whole screen, but I'm able to select what I want to screenshot. So you can see the little crosshairs. And I will just select Reply with the arrow. That gets saved to my desktop. Let's move that here. As I open it, I'm actually going to put a border around it so it doesn't get lost in all this extra white space in the Rich Content Editor. I am editing this right in preview and it just takes a few seconds. These are steps you certainly don't have to do, but you can if you'd like. Okay, so I've clicked out of preview and I'm going to add that here. So here it says, remember to post, click reply. I'm going to just take that word out. I'm sure that reply would signal the kids on what to click, but I'm going to give them the actual visual. So I'm going to go back into edit mode. Delete the word reply. I'm going to go through the same steps I did on the previous page with adding the learning targets picture. So I'll go up to my toolbar, upload image, click into the box, and then on my desktop it was that screenshot. So it looks a little fuzzy here. We'll see if it turns out that fuzzy on the actual discussion. Hit submit. And how does it look? I might try to make it a little bit larger. Looks pretty good. Now, the reason I give them that thumbs up emoji is because in this particular discussion, I've allowed them to like their classmates' responses or posts. So the thumbs up is just their visual for what it looks like when they can like or give their, their classmates feedback. So as I click Save, let's take a look. So here is my original one bold emojis, bold and underlined, and an image in my discussion. This is the one we just built together. Looks pretty good. Okay, before we move on, let's review what we've learned so far. In the Rich Content Editor, we've added text, and we've added visuals such as emojis or images to help our students. So let's see what we're going to learn next. So click Next. And in my done module, I will click next to see what we need to replicate. So we have our title of our page, we have our directions for our students, and then we have our article, what is electricity embedded on the page. Now we often get asked, well, where do I find all this content to add into a module? These are things you probably likely already have that you're using face to face that you may need to um, upload into your Google Drive or onto your computer so that you can access them and put them in Canvas. But you are not having to recreate the wheel and go out and find all of these new resources. Let's take what we've already used in the past and make it available in Canvas. So this particular article, What is Electricity? It's a chapter um, from our GVRL database that's available in our district that we have resources for science and social studies. So this is not something I had to go really dig for or recreate. It was something that was already available from my district. Okay, so this is what we need to go recreate. So if I click into edit, I'll have the rich content editor again. And I'm going to paste the text 
and I'm going to add in those visuals. Command, Control, Spacebar. Again, these are things that you can do. You certainly don't have to. Okay, so now it's time to add in my article. So the first way I'm going to show you is you're going to go up to this plugin icon and we're going to search for the external tool Google. And I'm going to search for that article. What is electricity? And once I select it, you can see it's that PDF. I'll click embed. And it looks like it embedded kind of between those two lines of text. So I'm simply going to put my cursor after the text and press return. And hopefully that bumps it down. Perfect. So I can even put another space there. If I wanted to, I could put my cursor next to the embedded article and center it. Now if that's the embedded version, students are able to click and scroll the article. Let me save it first to show you that part. Okay, so they have the ability to click this arrow. And you can see it opens in another tab if they want the larger version. And they can scroll this way. Or they can scroll here just depends how they would prefer to view it. So that's the embedded version. I'm going to go back up to edit and I'll show you another step I like to do. This only takes a few extra seconds, but it saves you from a few headaches later on, I promise. So I'm going to press return. So my cursor is below the embedded text. So I'm going to type in So I'm saying trouble viewing this article, click here. I'm going to make that a little bit bigger. And then I'm going to highlight the word here. And I'm going to go back up to that little plugin, go through that same process to find that PDF. And instead of clicking embed, this time I'm going to say link. And then you'll notice the word here that I'd highlighted before is now hyperlinked to that article. So for whatever reason, if the embedded document is not loading, students can click here and it allows them to access the article without having to wait for you to be able to fix it or help them. So it eliminates um, some troubleshooting. So they have two different options. Okay, let's click next to see what we're working on next. Okay, so we have a FET simulation, so I'm going to click back to our done one, and you can see um, this is almost like a game, but a simulation, and this is a link that I've used in the past. If you haven't used this FET interactive simulation website, it's awesome because it has simulations for all types of areas, even math, which are really cool. But the great part is they have the embed code, so you can see that it's embedded right on the page and students stay in Canvas to interact with this simulation instead of going outside of Canvas. Now in the past, prior to Canvas, I would have probably created a QR code of this URL so students could access it on the iPads. And I would have also created a tiny URL so on their Chromebooks they could type in the URL to get to this activity. But what's so nice is that it's simply in the module and they're just clicking next to get to it and it just eliminates all that confusion of how do I get there, what do I do? So I'm going to show you how that process works. So first I'll click edit and I'm going to go ahead and copy these. You guys are familiar with emojis enough, I don't need to go through all those steps again. So I'll paste the text. I have a different emoji here giving them a different visual and then I'll click return a few times you can see that that is size 12, so I want to make it size 14 like the other pages. And then down below here where I've been kind of dragging this rich content editor, you see these little arrows or carrots. If I click that, that's going to switch me to the HTML editor. So you can see kind of all of this mumble jumble code. So I'll press return a few times and I'll click over to this simulation that I want. I'm going to click embed and it's going to give me this embed code. So I want to make sure I copy that. 
I'm going to go through that step one more time. So here is the simulation I want my students to interact with. So I click the embed button. Here's the code. Right click, copy it. And I'm going to go back to that rich content editor. I've already switched to the HTML editor. So let me show you what that looks like one more time. So here's where I had my directions. I click these teeny tiny little arrow carrot things here and it switches over to the HTML where you see the, the code. And hit return a few times and I'm simply going to push command V and you'll see that embed code from the FET simulation website. When I click save, you can see the magic happen and that simulation is embedded on the page. Pretty cool, right? Now that you're familiar with embed codes, you can find other resources like Padlet and use their embed code to embed it right onto a page in Canvas. Okay, let's move on. On this next page, it looks like another page, but this one actually has two parts to it. All the other pages we've worked with so far only have one thing on them, where this is having them watch a video, and instead of going on to the next page in the module, the article is down below. And I did this because these two tasks were related, but they simply could have been separated and put on different pages. So I'll walk you through those steps. I already have this video in Studio. So let me click over into my incomplete module in my rich content editor, make it a little bit larger. And then let's see what my text is. Okay, so this is new. I not only have an emoji, but I have this fancy little number. So let me show you what that looks like. So I'm gonna copy the emoji and the text and come back over here. And I could use number one like that, but I have this fancy website that I like. And you're able to copy and paste characters and numbers. So I just keep it bookmarked up here and I'm going to click to numbers. And I found the number one, right click on it and say copy. Go back to my rich content editor and hit command V to paste it. Uh, I can make it a little bit larger. Again, not only do I have the emoji, but I also have the number one because we have two parts on, the, on this page. Now, you do not have to use all these fancy things, and these are by no means fancy, just little tips and tricks that I wanted to share with you along the way. Okay, and now we'll add the video from Studio. So I'll click the little plugin, go down and add Studio. Now Studio is an additional add-on, so your district might not have this feature. So here is my video that I've already put into Studio. I click it. I don't want to allow comments and I say embed. So now they have their directions. And now I'm going to add the second piece. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to this and I'm gonna copy number two. Again, you can totally omit this step. Number two. And then I'll go back and just copy it from here. So we had a few different directions. Read the poem, and as you think, think about our essential question, what is the relationship between people and resources? Okay, so I'll go back here, and I'll just delete that, and press paste. Make that a little bit larger. Okay, so now let's go back to that page and you can see I have this PDF. Now it looks a little bit different than how I embedded the PDF before, what is electricity. So I'm going to show you a different way to do this. So this is called inline preview and it looks a little bit different and offers a bigger picture of the text. So once I'm here, I have my cursor down below. 
I'm going to go up to this icon and click Upload Document. I have this on my, in my downloads and I'll press open after I select it and then I'll sit, select submit. And instead of it being embedded like we looked at before, it just shows a link to it. So if I click the link, click link options, I'm going to select automatically open an inline preview. So once I select that and hit done, you'll see what changes after I press save. So we see our number one, our directions, our video. We have number two, our directions, and then we see this poem with the inline preview. We simply could have embedded it like we did before with the previous article. I'm just showing you different options. Now sometimes with videos, this one came from YouTube. If I open YouTube in another tab and I make sure that I'm signed in over here, let's give it a second. And I make sure I'm signed into YouTube. If I click back here and hit refresh, that YouTube video in studio is ready to play. Your students may not have that issue in our district. Some of our filters require us to do that step. Okay, so that page is done. Studio video and two parts on this page. Okay, let's move on. We have our second read of the same poem. You can see that this poem I had typed up into a PDF version. I took this from our benchmark advanced resource from the teacher read aloud, so I had to type it into a better format so my students had access to it because from that resource, it's not a student resource, resource it's a, a teacher resource. So I recreated it into a PDF. But then I took it a step further and because this is a more challenging poem, I typed it into a Google slide and I embedded little audio think alouds and questions that I recorded so students could have a little bit of assistance with this poem because like I said, it's a little bit more challenging. And so because they were doing this independently, I wanted them to have a little support along the way. So I previously typed this up in Google Slides, added my little audio. The lights in Mr. Samuel's house are little audio clips. I wonder why no one recorded the moment. So I'm gonna take you through those steps of embedding a Google slide. Remember in our first read on the previous page in our module, it was simply a PDF, and now we're embedding a Google slide. It's very similar. So before I flip back to the other tab, I'm going to copy my directions, click edit, and then paste those directions. What I did here was I took a screenshot of that speaker icon and added it as an image here in the directions like we did on that very first page with um, the learning target image or the reply image. You could simply have just typed in, click on the speaker icon to listen, etc. Okay, so I'm going to hit enter or return a few times and I'll click back to that little plugin and click Google Apps. And I'm searching for the Google slide this time. When you search, you can see like this is a PDF, this is a slide, this is a doc, etc. I'm not seeing, oh, that might be it. Okay, so then I'll click embed. And I might press return so there's a little bit more space between the text and the poem and I can center that if I want, and then I'll click Save. So now the students have their directions here. They have the Google slide embedded. All of these I wasn't audio files are on the page, and you can see that it's just a one slide Google slide, slide tech, so they're not having to click throughout, throughout the slide. All right, so let's move on.
Okay, next up is an assignment, and this assignment may look a little different than the assignments you may have created in the past. You can see the question at the top, and then you can see that this Google slide is like embedded onto the page, and this is actually a Google Cloud assignment, and this gives you the ability to assign a template from your Google Drive to your students. Your students will then receive a copy of that document or that template, which allows them to modify it and then turn it back into you to give feedback to. So I'm going to walk you through those steps. I'm going to copy this question before I click over to our blank assignment. Click Edit. And in the Rich Content Editor, I'm going to paste that question. You'll notice I made it pretty large just because it gets kind of lost in the Google Cloud information at the top. And then down below, under Submission Type, I will select external tool, click find, and then you're going to find Google Doc Cloud Assignment. It's a little deceptive because you, you are not limited to just a Google Doc. You can use slides, drawing, etc. And I'm going to search for this slide and I'm going to click submit. Select. And then at the bottom I'm able to click save. So now students will see this template. It's rather small on the page, so if they click this link, it opens up larger, and then they can submit it back into Canvas. If you are not following Megan on Twitter, she shares amazing resources, and this is where I found her comprehension strategy slides. There are actually seven different strategies in this slide, and I made a copy with just having the ask question because that was the skill we are working on in this particular module. So now students are able to click the link, edit the template, add their work to it, and submit it back to you for this Google Cloud assignment. Okay, next up is creating a quiz. And we're actually creating an exit ticket with the quiz feature in Canvas. And if I flip back to our completed quiz, I'm going to click preview so we can kind of preview the questions you can see that the first two questions are open-ended where students are typing in their responses. In question two, I've linked to that poem, so if they need to reread the poem in order to ask, answer the question, they can. Question three is them self-assessing them on the standard. So they have four different options. We use standards-based grading. These are not the four categories that our teachers use to assess the students on the standard, but um, these are the four categories that I've come up with that I'd like my students to self-assess them on with every standard. So they become familiar with kind of both four-point scales. In question four, I simply downloaded or saved a video from our TCI Science resource and had them watch that five-second video clip to help answer that question. Question five is true-false. Question six is the same as the previous question, just a different lesson or learning target that they are reflecting on. And the last question is just open-ended after they've learned a little bit about this topic, what questions or additional topics would they like to explore? Just giving me a little bit more feedback about their learning process. Okay, so let's dive right in. So I'm going to click edit. And here's where we have the title of the quiz. I can type directions here. This is the rich content editor. So you have the, the ability to add videos, images, text, whatever you need to like we've worked on before. Up here I'm clicking questions. I am currently working in classic quizzes. I haven't switched over to new quizzes yet. So this is classic quizzes. So to start, I'm going to click new question. I like to number. And that first question was an essay question. You see, you have tons of different options here. Because we are using standard space grading, I'm removing the point value and saying zero. And I'm going to be toggling back and forth just so I can copy paste questions quickly. Okay, once I type in my question, again, I have the ability to add pictures, audio, text, bold, make it larger, etc. Hit update question. Question one is done. If I needed to, I could edit or delete that question. Question two. Question number two, changing my points to zero. And again, I'm going to flip back. 
I'm not going to copy that link because I'm going to show you how to do that. Copy the question. And again, we're in the Rich Content Editor, so we've done this already before. So I'm just going to re-show you how I can link to that poem in the question. So I found the, the poem. Instead of embed, I'm just going to simply say link. And then I will say update question. Okay, next up is a new question. And this is a little bit more complex type question because there are multiple answers. So I'm going to copy and paste the learning target in the question. Actually, I'm going to do all of this. Go back over. And then question three. And this time we're going to say multiple answers. That way it's kind of showing that there's no right or wrong answer when they're self-assessing themselves. So changing rate points to zero. Okay, so once I once I do that, I'm going to in the brackets do answer and square brackets. Possible answer. This is just filling in because I've been able to do that before. Uh, gosh, that one's not doing it. Copy and paste. Add another answer. And add another answer. The nice thing is if you're reusing questions or using the same question on the exit tickets that your students use often, you can create question banks. So you're not having to type this every single time. So now I'm going to say that's the right answer, that's the right answer, that's the right answer, and that's the right answer, because there's no right or wrong answer. Once I click Update Question, I'm going to go ahead and click Save so we can preview what that looks like. So now they can click this or any of them. Maybe they're not sure, but it's not going to show that it's right or wrong. Okay, I'm going to go back to Editing, click Questions. This is always kind of hidden up there. And before I move on, I noticed I didn't put question three, so I'm going to edit that quick. And I have to remember to say update question. Okay, next up, question four is that video. This is taken from our TCI resource. I'm going to copy the question quick. Add a new question. Paste it. Change my points to a zero. And once I get into the TCI website, this is actually the video I wanted, but I'm just going to go ahead and use this one for this quiz. If I right click on it, I can say save video as. The nice thing about the TCI videos is they're really short. Okay, so now I will say upload media. It's on my computer. I haven't put it in studio, but I definitely could if I want to keep reusing it year after year. And then I'll say open. I can add closed captioning and subtitles if I want. And then this is where this was an open ended question, so I haven't quite changed that yet. You can see that it's still for multiple choice. So I'm going to say essay question. This didn't change essay question. Therefore, those multiple choice options disappeared. Okay, so as I scroll down, I see we have a true-false. We'll do that one. New question. Question number five. Points to, oops, points to zero. And true false. Here's my question. Don't remember. Oops, I'm going to say done. That is true, so I've selected true as the correct answer and say update. Okay, the last questions on this quiz are the same as number three. 
and the same as number one and two where it's an essay question, so I won't go into those. There are a lot of different really cool features and quizzes that I haven't gone over, but this is the basic overview of the different types of questions that you can create, the different types of things you can put in the Rich Content Editor for your students, and it's just a great way to quickly assess your students and provide them feedback on the mastery of their standards. Okay, the last page in my module is this stop page. What's really nice, if I toggle back to my module that I created before, I had this stop page here. And when I made my second module, I was able to pull in that stop page and not have to recreate it. I could just reuse that page. And the reason we reuse the page and put that stop page in is if my students were, let's say, on this stop page, and they click next, it's going to take them on to the next module. So what this stop page does is say, okay, stop here. You're done with the module. I've just created a, a home button. I've linked it to the very first page or my home page. So I say go home. So they click home and it takes them back here. So that is a rather lengthy video showing you how to do all of the things add all of the content into a module. A few things to note, you are not having to recreate the wheel each time. Use the resources you already have, and these videos will help you take those resources you already have and put them into Canvas. I hope this helps.